Alright. Oh, no. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Crashed it. Oh, dude. Alright, so so um this is film talk and we're gonna talk about movies that that uh kinda have a special meaning to us. It's not really a film analysis, but we're just gonna talk about uh, a time in our life when it, it affected us and we saw it and uh, what's sentimental about it. And it, just, it really does just stick with you. Yeah. Uh, like no matter... Like a cold sore. <laughs> God bless the herpes. Herpes <laughs> jokes. That's always nice. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, like, no, I mean, you always, you see a movie when you're a kid or at any point throughout your life and it just, it tugs at all the right strings and will always mean something whether it's funny, sad, scary, whatever it is. It's just it's awesome to always have that connection to something. Right. So so for you, what was a movie that kind of stood out for you that Stripes, That's Bill Murray, uh, yeah. all the way. Um, it was definitely one of the big influential I know it's, it's not like the movie that you'd be like, yes, this shaped my life, but uh, it, might have had something to do with me joining the military. Uh, <laughs> a lot to do with watching it with my father at the time when I was a kid. Uh, that was one of the the few actual funny movies that I watched with my dad. Most of them were serious, or, and it was just uh, it was good to see like that comedy comical side with him. Mm -hmm. and I always held on to that and uh, <laughs> just the marching and everything and. and Pops, he used to call Cadence, and I'd then march through the living room, and, and just good times. Yeah. No, uh, what about you? Uh, did you ever see Stripes? Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I, like I said, I, I, th I think I saw it in the theater. I think we snuck in and saw it in the theater. So I was probably uh, senior, junior. I was a sophomore in high school when it came out, and um, I, I just because I grew up watching Saturday Night Live, I was. Ten years old when it came oh, out in '75. Yeah, so Saturday nights, I would stay awake and you know watch TV and and I, I so I grew up watching Bill Murray and and was always a huge fan and and so I, yeah I just remember really digging the the movie how funny I mean it was so funny so I mean back then it was so so funny and the and the thing is you know a, a lot of movies you see in the '80s that you liked back then. They just don't stand up. But yeah, this they don't one. translate. No, no, they don't. <laughs> but this one, I mean, uh, I just watched it uh, this past week, and you watched it last night. Last night, yeah. and and still um, one of my favorites. Still, still holds up. So oh, darn funny. God. The marching scene. Yeah. Like when they're out there and uh, doing the whole. Where you been, son? Training, sir. And then he looks at him and he goes, "What kind of training, sir?" Your son. He goes, ARMY TRAINING, SIR! Yeah. And, I mean, there's... Uh, that's the fact, Jack! Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the fact, Jack! Uh, and that's, that's like, one of the clips that you know, people really remember. It sticks with them. They love it so much. Um, so, if... Let's say if Christopher Walken was uh, saying... If, if, he, if, if he had that role instead of Bill Murray, what would... Oh, dude, honestly, if I had to see Christopher Walken do any scene, it, it would be... Where Bill Murray's getting broken up with. Oh, yeah, at the beginning, and, and yeah. At the very beginning, where. It's like she's a little cute. And, 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 yeah, he's just convincing her that being a slacker is adorable. Yeah. And that it's okay, and that she's a sexual dynamo, yeah. and he's been doing studying on the outside yeah. just to keep up. Most men can't like, keep up. Oh, he'd be like, whoa, you're dynamo. I've been doing studying on the outside just to keep up. It's amazing. I love this girl. And she'd be like, ah, it's not that cute. Like, it's a little cute. Oh, so they're both Christopher Walken. It's a little cute. I can't do a girl voice. <laughs> I can't do it. Which just makes it that much more awkward because Christopher and then somebody's yelling for cowbell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, that, that'd be... If I could see Christopher Walken do any part of that, that that would definitely be the scene. Can you imagine if, if he had that role and then in basic training when they're getting their hair cut? Oh. What would they do to his hair? Oh, God. What would they do to his hair? I, I don't think a barber could touch that. <laughs> yeah. like, I think it would just, he'd yeah. look at him and just melt. Yeah. It'd be like, Something. maybe he could stab him in the eye with a soldering iron. Yeah, just, whoa, it's the wrong tone. <laughs> Doing it all wrong. Do it again. Stabbing the face with a soldering iron. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. That's awesome. Cheers! Oh, I love that man. He's got such an awesome voice. Yeah. Maybe he's such a character. Suicide Kings is definitely my favorite Christopher Walken yeah. movie, though. But 
Oh, man. I better stop petting the dog because it looks like I'm petting your leg. It does, <laughs> and it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. What about you? Uh, favorite scene from Stripes? Oh, oh. Favorite scene from Stripes. Um, I, I think it's the scene where Sergeant Halka and, and, they're all, and the, all the recruits are sitting around in a circle. They're telling a little bit about each other. And um, of course, everybody remembers the Bill Murray line. You know, girls, chicks dig me because I rarely wear underwear. When I do, it's something. That's a great line. That's <laughs> totally Bill Murray. But, but Harold Ramis, when he says, uh, I think he says something about his father told him, don't ever you know, strike somebody in anger unless you're sure you can get away with it. <laughs> it's such a great and line. It's just the look on his face and everybody's face. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. But it'll have all of your backs. Yeah, yeah, but I'll, 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 be, right there. I'll be right there. We go right to combat, I'll be right behind you. And I totally, like, honestly, it really wasn't that far off. Yeah. Like, basic training was hilarious. Oh, the scene where, they're, where they go into the recruiter's office. Oh, my God. And they ask them, are either you two homosexuals? No, they, but we're willing to learn. Yeah, yeah. well, they send us to someplace special. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, like, flaming? <laughs> He's like, no, but we're willing to learn. Yeah, that was oh, great. It's great. He's like, man, it's like, this is why I always lose to guys like you. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, and when you made it with that cow, I got a party with this cow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just great. And I, I, I've met guys like that throughout my oh, yeah. career. Oh, me too. I mean, it's me not too. as far-fetched and outlandish yeah. as you think. And I love every one of them. But, like, it always brings me back to this movie. And that's, that's the thing. I've enjoyed, and I got to travel Europe, and I was stationed in Italy uh, for three years. And, I mean, they're in Milan in the movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, Milan was gorgeous. I had such a good time. Uh, but that was that was one of the things going through Europe. I, if I had a Winnebago, I, I would have been in heaven. That would have been the perfect ending to my time in Italy. It would be a Winnebago, an urban assault vehicle. Uh, uh, That's the uh, fact, Jack. Glorious. Good times. Great movie. <laughs> what about you, man? What's uh what's the movie that you want to talk about? What what influenced you? It's also um, a military movie. There's um, it's uh, Apocalypse Now. Oh God, that's one. Yeah, and and so, so so backtracking. Uh, uh, in high school, one of my buddies, um, guy named Tim Amoroso, he, I think he's a, he's a retired army officer. Okay. And um, he was telling me, and uh, it was probably, gosh, I, I can't remember if I was a junior or senior, but he says, Doug, he says I just got this movie Apocalypse Now. I I think he had it on laser disc, because from what I remember. He says, oh, you just got to hear it. You got to hear Terminate. it. And uh, I said, oh, yeah, okay, Extreme okay, fine. So he t- he, I go over to his house on like a Saturday morning, and he puts the, the disc in. He's got this, and his family had this. Uh, in my house, we had the console stereo. The big console TV, the console stereo. Yep. We had no remote controls in the house. Everything was. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had the one button that yeah. popped off. So you had to like. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, and try to like nudge it yeah. to the side. And. Uh, and so he had this, this huge stereo system, and so when he, when Apocalypse Now started, with the helicopters going from oh, left to right, so panning sad. left to right, and then when the end started, oh my God, I was blown away. I just, I, I, I was totally mesmerized. Was, and that's how you have to see that movie. Yeah, oh my gosh, it was so powerful. And then, uh, of course, when it fades into the uh, ceiling fan, with Martin Sheen sitting in a, in a hotel, that, that's my first memory of, of Apocalypse Now, and, and then so uh, I, I bought it years ago, and I watch it every year, and uh, just such a powerful movie because I, I and, and I, I didn't make the connection until years later, but I had read The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, okay. and um, when I was in high school. Even before I saw the film, did you know that those two were connected? No, I, I didn't. I didn't, have, I didn't at the time. I didn't at the oh, time. Oh, even better. Yeah. Ah, when you can reach back yeah. for a connection like that. That's yeah. Cool. You know, it's such a powerful film, and you know, and then you have so many. Like every time you see the movie, you have. Oh, that's my favorite scene. Now you yeah. watch it again. Oh, this was my favorite scene. It's so powerful. Well, you're always going to notice like that. Those movies like that have so many different subtleties and stuff. You're always going to see something different yeah. every time because you're going to be paying attention to something. Or it's a different point in your life. Right. 
and and um, they there was a documentary about the making of the pop clips now, and I think it's called The Heart of Darkness, and it's so. I mean, if you watch that, you have even a greater appreciation for what Coppola had to go through to make this film, and he was he was literally losing his mind. He was going insane. He was over budget, you know, in, uh, in the middle of shooting, Martin Sheen has a heart attack. Um, and then after they after they had paid Brando, I think they paid him like a million dollars. And then he doesn't show up. He doesn't show up and then... Classic Brando. And then when he shows up, he's way overweight. I didn't, didn't read Heart of Darkness. Didn't know any of his really? lines. Almost everything he did, uh, you know, they kind of did on the fly. And, but they they put it together. Wow, they pulled that off. Yeah, yeah. God, all that, and they yeah. made that movie. Yeah, so it's incredible. It's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty powerful movie. You know, it's a powerful story. Yeah. just period. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so that's one of my my favorite films. I, I and I don't think I ever saw it with my uh, with my with my dad. Um, my dad was a mash man. We loved that. Oh God, yeah. yeah. I still cry at the final episode. That, that's the only time I've ever seen my dad cry. It was, it was 1983, the final episode. Well, the goodbye. The goodbye. And the, oh yeah. God. I look over at my dad because we we would watch Mash faithfully together all the time. We never really said much, uh, but we watched it together all the time. And that final scene, yeah, I could see my my dad tearing up. Oh, uh, yeah, that's... And you can't, you can't... That's always going to be with you. That oh, yeah, memory yeah, is always going to be tied to that scene. Yeah. And it's just the point in your life. Yeah. Kill with you smalls. Yeah, uh, uh, Maggie did want to talk about Scooby-Doo 2, I think. But we're kind of running out of time. Um, she loves the sequel. Yeah. Once again, this has been uh, Dad and Daughter Talk, Film Talk. Uh, my daughter is not here with us. As you can see, so my buddy Matt is standing in. A poor substitute, but <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> Almost as pretty. So, oh, God. I've never been called pretty. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, episode two. So until next time, um, take care and keep watching film. Cheers. Cheers. This is